welcome to the Classical Gab Fest, a weekly discussion about the ever-changing world of classical music. I'm your host for this week, William White, and since we're still dealing with the fallout of my ill-timed COVID case, my co-hosts Tiffany Liu and Kensha Watanabe are not with me this week. But if you'll indulge me, I'll hope to entertain your ears for, oh, the next few minutes. Here's a little peek behind the curtain of how the podcast is put together. The three of us maintain a rather extensive master Google Doc of all the various stories, themes, and topics that we're considering to cover on the GabFest. And these are all sorted into categories. Classical culture, news, guest ideas, movie club, you get the idea. From the earliest days, one category has been called Will's Personal Axes to Grind, a list of my particular bêtes noires in the world of classical music. For example... Why doesn't anybody else love the European art house film scores that I do? Why can't Schnitke catch fire in the West? Classical recordings that start 10 seconds into the track, and so on and so forth. So since it's just me this week, I thought I'd dip into the axe case and talk about something that annoys me to no end, namely piano benches. Okay, here's what I have to say about piano benches. And to be clear, I'm talking about the big, bulky, expensive ones. To start off with, they're big, bulky, and expensive. So these are the black, padded, wooden ones. If you've ever tried to lift one, they weigh approximately 250 pounds. There's no reason that they should weigh that much. I have a simple wooden piano bench in my studio here. It probably weighs all of 5 or 10 pounds. It's very easy to move around. Whenever I have to change a light bulb in my apartment, uh, I just take it with me where I need to go. I can stand on it. It's pretty stable. But these black piano benches, these kind of professional quality ones that you see on stages, you know, when there's like a big 9-foot Steinway, they are so heavy It's because they're made out of some heavy wood, but more to the point, it's because they are filled with some complicated system of gears and apparatus inside that make it so that you can adjust the height. But let's be honest, these things don't adjust the height at all. They've got those knobs, these wheels on the side, and I would say that you have to twist the wheel approximately a thousand revolutions to get it to move one millimeter up or down. And I, frankly, I think that that's even uh, uh, an overstatement. I think that these things are psychosomatic. I think that they are at one fixed height, and the wheels just give the pianist the illusion of being able to adjust the height. Now, the other thing is, I said that they were expensive, and I, you know, I've never actually bought a piano bench, uh, at least not separate from buying a piano. So I really don't have a frame of reference. I assumed that they are expensive because you know they're so heavy and stuff. Yeah. But I have done you all the favor of doing some googling. I'm here at GrandPianoBench.com, which I will not be linking to in the show notes, folks. I have seen things on this website that you would not believe. The least expensive adjustable piano bench here costs $359, and that's on sale. That's $100 off. The most expensive, the Janssen Artist Bench, ooh, the Artiste Bench, costs $825. And those are just in the single piano bench category. If you want to get a duet adjustable piano bench, you can get the Empire Duet Concert Adjustable Piano Bench for, oh, it's on sale, for $450. The most, oh my God, the Janssen Petite Duet Artist Bench. The Petite Duet, why is the Petite Duet even more expensive? This one costs $908. Oh, but boy, the Janssen Duet Artist Bench costs $1,058.35. Now, I was curious about uh, the, the history of these things because, for example, when you look back at pictures of like Victorian parlors in the 19th century, you'll notice that they sit on piano stools, which strikes me as a much better solution for this particular problem. And I'm looking up now uh, a little bit about the history of the piano bench and the piano stool. It says that prior to the 1840s, piano stools were both intricately crafted with animals' feet and motifs for the elite, as well as plainly carved for the average person. The artistry of the 1850s added floral motifs, cabriole legs, and elegant serpentine-shaped seats to the piano stool model. 
By the late 19th century, piano stools from England and America were elaborately made with cushioned and embroidered seats. Throughout the 19th century, stools were the predominant furniture used to sit at the piano in order to accommodate for modesty by keeping the wide hoops and crinolines that were fashionable at the time from lifting and revealing women's undergarments. As more streamlined silhouettes became fashionable, the need for small stools vanished and piano benches started gaining popularity in the 19th and early 20th century. Well, okay, so we've got even more reasons to prefer the piano stool over the piano bench. Now here's something, I'm looking now at the historicnewengland.org uh, website, and they have sort of an, an artist's rendering, or a, I guess an engineer's kind of rendering of a piano stool from, uh, let's see, this looks to be from 1900, a design drawing titled Piano Stool, rendered in ink on trace. Neoclassical style music chair has oval caned back with carved gadrooned rim. Ooh, I don't know what a gadrooned rim is. You learn something new every day. Shoe with two carved scrolls supporting back and flanking a panel with carved urn and swags. Round seat with carved apron and four reeded round legs with ovoid turned feet. Seat may be raised or lowered. Ah, look, seat may be raised or lowered. Okay, now here's a site for, um, this is a contemporary maker of piano stools and benches. Uh, he's got a bit of history here. This is from David Crombie's World Piano News. This is Kaunus Piano Benches. A new Spanish company is addressing this. Zaida Jimenez from Castellón in Spain set up Kaunus Design SL with a mission to produce truly beautiful and practical piano benches. But how much do these cost? Oh my god. Prices for the Kaunus piano benches and stools range from 8,000 to 10,000 euros. More than the cost of some pianos. Yeah, you got that right. However, these are exclusive, handmade, collectible pieces of furniture. They are works of art. Each takes around six months to make and the skills of six different craftsmen. Every Kaunus product is registered with a unique serial number engraved on a plate under the seat. Now, I will admit, these are very handsome objects, and they do come in a wide variety of styles and materials. And there is, oh, now this is very interesting. There is some accountability here, namely that um, on the, the, the knob, the wheel that adjusts the height up or down, there is actually a gauge. So it goes from zero to one to two to, I don't know, probably zero to 10. So you can actually know which setting is yours. So with this gauge, it has to go up or down, right? Because I mean, it, that, that would just be a level of gaslighting beyond what you could imagine. If they had a gauge where you can say, oh, my setting is number five and it didn't actually go up and down. But hey, you know, in the world of piano benches, anything goes, nothing would surprise me. They're the worst. Oh, and I have one final thing to say about piano benches, which is this. If you are going to do a gig with piano and if there are any string players there, I promise you that before you can get your hands on the piano bench, the cellist will have gotten there and will have absconded with the piano bench for their own nefarious purposes. Or sometimes even one of those tall violists will get there even earlier and call dibs on the piano bench and just be sitting there on it. Um, so anyway, piano benches are the worst. I very much recommend sitting on a chair or a stool instead. Uh, and if you have to use a bench, use a simple wooden one. Any, any slight inconvenience in height is just not worth the mental fatigue of trying to figure out if this piece of furniture is actually moving up or down. All right, so that's enough about piano benches. Uh, let's go on to the classical mixtape. Once again, just me. And once again, I'm going to dip into the well of Will's personal axes to grind. One of my favorite things to talk about is great contemporary European film scores. I've definitely included some music by Alberto Iglesias on our mixtape playlist in the past. So this week I'm going to choose music by a French composer, Philippe Rombi. He writes film scores for the French director François Ozon, one of my very favorites. This is from an Ozon film called Angel. It's just a delightful waltz in sort of a classic style that you might associate with, with film scores from a much earlier era. 
I'm sure it will delight you as much as it does me. Enjoy. You'll find the links to this and to our full classical mixtape playlist in the show notes. And with that, it's time to wrap up this episode of the Classical Gab Fest. I'm William White, and on behalf of Tiffany Liu and Kensho Watanabe, I'd like to thank you so much for listening and to encourage you to subscribe and rate us on your podcast app. We'd also love your help spreading the word about the show on social media, where you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can reach us at classicalgabfest at gmail.com, and we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, happy listening, and we'll be with you next week. <laughs>